Welcome to Arctic Lake 360, and today we're going to do a quick overview of working with RISE. RISE is one of the authoring applications that you get with your subscription. So let's go ahead and click on the RISE icon. And what you see here are all the different courses. I only have two courses, but if you had an assortment of courses, you'd see those here. Now on this side of the screen, you can change the view. So you can do a list view, for example. You can sort them by alphabetical title or recently edited. I'm going to go back to grid view. And then over here you can see that you can create folders to sort the courses. So for example, by default you're going to see all courses. Uh, we're going to click on New Folder. I'm going to create Safety. And we'll hit Save. And so now you see I have a Safety folder. So we're in All Courses. I'm going to go to my Safety course here. And I want to move that to my Safety folder. So I'm just going to click on the three buttons. You can see I have some options. Uh, one of those is to move to and I can select my safety folder. I can create a folder on the fly if I want to, but we're going to select safety. I'm going to hit move and what that does is move it to my safety folder. Now if I want to remove that, I can click on the three buttons again and you can see that I can move it to another folder. Or I can remove it from the folder and if you want to delete the folder, go ahead and delete that. Now one thing to keep in mind is if you delete a folder, it's also going to delete the courses, but that's okay because if you accidentally delete a course, just go to Delete the Courses here and you can find it and then you can reset that. So let's go ahead and look at a sample course. And what we want to do on the sample course is we're going to see what it looks like from the user's perspective and kind of see what it looks like on different devices. And then we'll look at the options we have for sharing the courses. And then from there we'll build a simple course, look at how the lesson structure works. So let's go ahead and preview the course first. And we're going to click on Preview. And this is our sample course. Now you can see I've got some preview options here. One of the nice things about RISE is the content is fully responsive. So it doesn't matter what device you're on, the content's going to reflow based on that device. So if I want to look at it on a mobile phone in portrait mode, you can see uh, what it's going to look like. It's going to look a little bit different, right? Because I have different screens set up and different options available to me in terms of the size of the screen. So for example, on the tablet, when it's in landscape mode, I can see the sidebar. But when I watch it on the phone, the sidebar is going to disappear. Now I can access the sidebar, but to save screen space, I'm just going to see the lesson content. So it's fully responsive. We're going to go to desktop mode and just see what we have. By default, you're going to have a sidebar. Uh, you have a search option here. Uh, you can see I see how my lessons, I can click through the lessons. You can see how that works. Now you'll also have a progress indicator. This is going to indicate your progress through the course. And then over here we can see progress uh, through a specific lesson. So watch what happens. I'm going to click on this lesson. As I scroll through the lesson, watch what happens to the icon here. So you can see I'm going through the timeline interaction. And then when I'm done, it's going to indicate that it's complete. And then I can go to the next lesson. If I want to lock the navigation, I can do that in the settings. Um, but right now we can jump around to the different lessons. And then again, we can see what those lessons look like on the mobile devices. So that's the preview option. And you would always be in a course and you can click on preview. If you're working on a lesson, let's say I'm editing this lesson and I just want to preview that one lesson, I can preview that and I'm only going to see the lesson I'm working on. So you're always going to have the preview option up here. So let's go ahead and come back here. So uh, that's the lesson. That's our course. Uh, our sample course. Let's say I want to share the sample course. What do I need to do? I've got two options. One is I've got the share link. If I use this share option, I share this link, it, I'm going to share the course that I'm working on. So I may have typos. I may be changing content. Uh, so that link is going to give them access to the course you're working on. Um, I usually do that if I'm going to share it send it to email and then look at it on my smartphone just to see what it looks like. I don't really care if it's at a production level. If I want to share a course and I want to solicit feedback, uh, then you go to Review. You click on that. You're going to publish a course. We'll go ahead and publish a new one. You can publish a new item or you can overwrite an existing course. We're going to go ahead and publish a new item. We hit Publish. What that's going to do is it's going to publish the course. It's going to upload it to Articulate 360 and now it's going to be available to you in Articulate Review. And so you can see I can view the course in Articulate Review. Now I want to share the course. So what I want to do is come over here to share. So I click this link, Share. I share this 
link with other people and they're going to see the course exactly the way you're seeing it right now. So they're going to see the course and they're going to see this window here for comments. Now you can go into review and turn comments off and all those things, but uh, for now we're just talking about sharing the course. So they can go through the course and let's say they have feedback. They're on this part, part of the course. Let's say, you know, I want a different image, right? Um, they could do that, post a comment, and then you can reply. If you come to feedback, uh, you can manage all the comments. You can reply from inside of here. You can resolve comments, delete them, whatever you want to do. The main thing though is this is how you share courses to solicit feedback uh, from people. And then if you make changes in the courses, let's say we come back to the course here. Let's go back to the course and I make changes. We had that grape image, right? So I'm going to go to settings. Maybe somebody wanted a different image. So we're going to change the image here. We're going to delete that. And we're going to add a cover photo. And let's say we want, uh, we'll just take the, the guy in a business suit. We hit that. And now I've got a new image, right? So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go to review. And we're going to publish this. And we're going to publish over an existing course. So I'll go ahead and publish that. And I still have my link here. So let's come here and um, let's go to review. And you can see it's been updated. And now I can see which version. So this was the old version, right? And this is the new version. So review is really cool if you're working with courses and you want to solicit feedback. And then I share your courses with your subject matter experts or your customers, clients, whoever you want to. I share the course with. So let's go back to the course here and let's talk about building a course because this is why you're using RISE, right? So we're going to come over here and let's start a new course. So we're in the main RISE window. I want to start a new course. So I'm just going to click on the new course button and that's going to open up a course window here. I can add a title. Let's just say Safety 101 is our title. I can choose my author. We're going to add some text in here. Here is some text, right? And that could be your dis course description, whatever you want to put in there. And then we start to put some lessons together. And the key way that you're authoring in Rise is uh, you have a course and the course is made up of a number of lessons. So we're going to go ahead and add one lesson. Let's see, lesson one. And we hit enter and you can see it creates a placeholder for us to add some content. I'm going to go ahead and add lesson two, hit enter, and it creates another placeholder. If I want a section title, you can see it says shift plus editor to add a section. So let's just say we want section one. If I hit shift enter, I get a section title and I can click and drag this into place. And when you're working with these lessons, some people like to outline all their lessons and then add their content. Some people like to work one lesson at a time. Really doesn't matter. It's whatever's going to work best for you. Uh, if you find that you need to move lessons around, just click and drag them around. You can see how that works. Now let's go ahead and add some content. So we're going to add content here. And I've got two things I can add. I can add lesson or I can add a quiz. We're going to go ahead and add a lesson. Now we're inside of our lesson and I can change my title if I want to. The main thing is we want to add content. And the way you do that is you add content using uh, these different types of content blocks in Rise. So if we click on all blocks here, you can see it opens up a block library and I've got all sorts of blocks available to me. So if you're just getting started, I would say, you know, create a lesson and add every single block type in there and just see what you can do with the blocks because you have a, a lot to work with. But you can see they're sorted here. The key thing though is you can use this shortcut here, right? So you can use the shortcut bar and you can quickly pull your lesson content together. So I'm going to add text. Now I'll point out it doesn't matter if this isn't the type of text that you want to add because you'll notice when I added the text over here on the side, I can change it dynamically to a different type of text type. So uh, it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not when you're adding the content. So let's just go ahead and add some content. You can see I add content and the shortcut bar just keeps following me uh, down the lesson. Now let's say I've added content but I need to put content in between the lesson. So I've got a couple of options. So one is I could add text. Let's say that's what I need to put between it. And then I can come over here and I can move it up, right? And so I can move the text in between wherever it needed to go. Uh, the other option is you can see as I mouse over the blocks, I get this little icon right here. So when I click on that, that's going to open up my block library and then I can add content this way. So let's say I want to add a little divider icon 
And we can do that here. Now I've got a continue bar. This continue bar is really cool because watch what happens when I preview. I've got all my content and then the content below it's not being exposed until I click continue. So it's a nice way to kind of stall the learner so they don't just keep scrolling through the bottom of the page. But as you can see, adding content is pretty straightforward, right? It's just a matter of either choosing the plus icon or as you're going through adding this from the shortcut bar. So you've got all your content, you're happy with it, right? Let's say you need to make a few edits. Let's look at the options we have. Uh, when you're on a block, uh, you'll notice you've got your block types. You can dynamically change. That only works for certain blocks. It doesn't work for every single block, but you'll see I can change the continue bars to different or the dividers to different types of dividers. Uh, the bullets I can change the different bullets. So I can add my content. And I can dynamically change uh, how it's structured there. They're all going to have edit options. So when I click on edit, uh, you've got your content tab, and that's where you can add your content if you don't want to dynamically change it here. And you can click on settings. Uh, they're going to have the same basic settings. So you've always got your padding. And that's the distance between the top and bottom of the block. So watch what happens when I choose 100. You can see I increase the distance there, right? And so if I do no padding, it decreases the distance. So the padding is going to be that distance between the blocks. Background color is pretty straightforward. Let's say I want a darker background. Uh, I can come in here to the text, which is another way you can edit the content. If I select the text, I've got my standard text editing. I can change the color here so the contrast works uh, better with that, right? So we can just change the color. Let's make it white. So now I can colorize the block. I can colorize the text as well. So if you're working with your branding, that's a great way to work in brand colors with the text coloring and with the block coloring. And uh, if I want to revert back, I can just go ahead, go to settings. I can clear this, and then I would need to uh, select my text. Probably should have not cleared it, but we'll go ahead and um, change it back to black here. And let's see if I can find that. It wasn't too hard, uh, but you can see how that works. Which brings up an interesting point about working with the blocks. You've got all these different content blocks. One type of content block that's really handy is the template block. So let's say we're going to come back here and we're going to recolor this here, right? So we're going to change this again to dark. And I guess I didn't select all my text. And we're going to make this text light. Every time I create a block, I don't want to have to make these changes. So maybe I've got special type of settings for my block. All I have to do is save this as a template. And I just click on the icon. I go to Templates. That's going to open up a template window. And I'm going to create a new template. And I can select all the blocks that I want for the template. In this case, I just want this one that I customized. Or I could select a whole lesson. I'm going to hit Save. And so maybe I call this my contrast block, right? I can share it with the team if I want to. Hit Save. The next time I want to insert that, doesn't matter what lesson I'm on, what course I'm on. Next time I want to insert that, I click this, go to Templates, and there's my block. I can insert that. And now I've got it all customized. So that saves me a lot of time. When you're ready to preview, just hit Preview. If you need to move things, you can move them up or down here. You can duplicate them, right? So you can create, it, create another one or you can delete those. So pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and look at the other type, and that's the quiz type. So let's go back to the lesson here. We're going to change this and have it say Quiz. And let's insert a quiz, add some content. We're going to choose Quiz. We're not going to put any content in here just to save some time, but you can see I've got some quiz questions by default. If you want to add additional questions, you click down here. You can add different types of questions. All pretty straightforward. Uh, because it's your quiz and you may be tracking it, uh, you can go to Settings, and then you can set your settings in there. And they all kind of make sense, like passing score and, and all these different options that you have here. We'll just keep everything by default. So we've got. Um, Let's go ahead and close this out. So we've got a lesson. We've got our quiz. Let's go ahead and preview the entire course and see what it looks like. So I've got my course here, all the default structure. We're going to click through this. And then you can see here are the lessons I built. Right There's our Continue button. And you can see, notice those animations that happened. We've got our quiz now. We're tracking our progress. We're going to go through our quiz. And you can see how that works. So everything looks good. We're happy with it. We can check it in different uh, devices. Everything's perfect. 
and uh, we want to make a few changes so we're going to go up to the settings here so we go to settings uh, you can see you've got theme settings you can control the navigation again when you read through it all kind of makes sense you know you want a free restricted you want sidebar no sidebar so you can read through those uh, if you want to translate the course uh, there's instructions on how to do that. You duplicate it and then translate the file and upload that. You can customize your labels. So you can customize the text here on the labels. Uh, you can change the language on the labels if you're doing translations. And you can collaborate. So uh, to collaborate, the other person doesn't need to be on your Articulate 360 team, but they do need to have an Articulate 360 subscription, which makes sense because they need to have access to Rise so that they can do the editing. All you have to do is add their email in there, and then they can access that course. So uh, well, let's go back to theme. Uh, when you're working with the theme, you can add your logos. Uh, you can change the cover photo. Uh, right now, we don't have a cover photo. Let's go ahead and add a cover photo. I can upload a photo or I can browse the photos. And we'll just choose this mountain lake scene. That looks pretty nice. So we're going to upload that. And now you can see I've got my cover photo. It's also going to show up here in the corner. If I don't want that, I can turn that off. You can see how that works. If I go to, I'm going to turn it off. So we've got our customized theme options. Now, the way it works is you're going to get one accent color. And you could see that the accent color right here, you can see how it kind of works throughout your course. If I change it to green, you can see the accent color here. If I have a custom color, just click here. I can add a custom color right here. And then a lot of questions about uh, how do I integrate my brand. I would select one accent color. And then you can come up with other colors that you can use to colorize the text or you can colorize the blocks. There are a lot of neat examples in the community of things people have done uh, to kind of integrate their brand with the RISE courses. And then over here you have your fonts. You're going to have two fonts. You have a heading font and a body font. Uh, you've got some default fonts in here. You can see those. If you have a custom font, just come over here to manage custom fonts and then you would upload those. Now you need to have web fonts, and this will explain how you get those web fonts. So if you don't have the web font for the custom font, uh, there's a process that you can go through. And then once you get it converted, uh, you can upload that. Once they're uploaded, you're just going to see them here in the drop-down list, and you can assign those as your theme, as your heading and body fonts. So that's kind of working with the themes. All right, and that's basically it. We're going to go ahead and close this. So you've got a course. Uh, you're ready to publish it, go to export, and then you're going to choose what you want to do. So if you have an LMS, you can select that, select your LMS options, and then how you want to track the course. If you're publishing for web, just select that, and then you're just going to publish and you're going to get a zip folder. So whether you do LMS or web, you're going to get a zipped up course. And what you need to do is put that on your server. So for the LMS, you're going to upload the zipped course to the LMS and get that all connected. If you're publishing for web, uh, you just need to take the contents from that zip folder and you need to move that to your web server and then create the URL from that. So pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just a folder with all the contents in there. Uh, one final thing, a uh, couple things I would do is take advantage of the live training. As you can see here, we do a four-part series on getting started with live, and then we do some other sessions that will help you learn more about live, and we do a deeper dive into that, something that we can't do in a quick tutorial like this. And then the other thing is go into the community. If you have any questions, ask. We also have these RISE user guides and tutorials, and they walk through all the different features as well. Enjoy working with RISE. If you have any questions, jump in the community and ask. We're always there to help you out.